Hi everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student, and welcome to Ovi Med. Actually, now I'm done with my first year, so I should say I'm a second year medical student. Well, I'm waiting for my grades now, so after I get my grades, then I'm gonna say I'm a second year student. But anyways, in this week's video, I'm gonna talk to you about what I learned in my courses during my first year of medical school at Trinity College Dublin. So I'm gonna break this down to two parts. So the first part is gonna be my first semester, and the second part is gonna be my second semester. So regarding my first semester, I already made a video talking about what I learned, what I did, what my courses were, what kind of assessments I had. So you can check that out right here if you wanna know more details. So for my first semester, I had three courses plus the PBLs, the problem-based learnings. So what were these three courses? So I had human form and function, which had physiology and anatomy in it. Then I had evolution and life, which I like to call biochemistry and what basically everyone calls. And then I had HBDSE, which is human development, behavioral science and ethics, I think. Yeah, I got that right, HDBSE. Um, so yeah, let's start off with anatomy for my first semester. So in anatomy, we saw pretty much every single muscle in the body in the musculoskeletal system, except for the neck region. Um, and we saw basically every single origin, every single insertion, the nerve supply, the blood supply, uh, to pretty much all the muscles that there are in the body. Then we saw all the bones also, uh, except for uh, the skull. We did uh, everything except for that because that's gonna be in our second year in the head and neck anatomy course that we're gonna have. And then from time to time, you know, we saw a few clinical problems here and there. Uh, like when we we're doing the shoulder, we saw like rotator cuff tears in sports and stuff like that. And also as part of the anatomy course, we also had anatomy dissection labs. So in these labs, we had a donor and we would look basically at the muscles. We had a list of things that we needed to identify in the body and basically just study. So that was a major learning experience from that course, which was extremely valuable. Uh, it was a really great experience and very good for learning. Then moving on to physiology. Um, physiology was, uh, how can I say this? very basic it was like high school stuff um very very basic it was like anak tpas pumps like cells uh what else so like uh, a few things about neuro like electrical transmission uh, muscle contraction things like that you know very basic stuff then we saw like sensory perception um a bit of endocrinology not very detailed a bit of hematology and I think that's about it. We didn't have any labs in physiology for the first semester. And I think that sums up pretty well human form and function. So in the first semester, anatomy and physiology weren't really intertwined together. Um, you couldn't really link one with another as well as you can for the second semester, which I'm gonna get to really quickly. So now if we move to biochemistry, so in biochemistry, I have the list of topics right here. So we've studied proteins, the cell cycle, carbohydrate metabolism, lipid metabolism, amino acid metabolism, membranes, bioenergetics slash mitochondria, um, you know, with oxidative phosphorylations and stuff. And we saw enzymes um, such as like, you know, different types of inhibition and stuff like that. Uh, once again, pretty basic stuff. Then moving on to the next course, uh, which is ethics and behavioral science. Well, the name pretty much says it all. Uh, we had lectures and then in parallel, we had tutorials, both in ethics and in behavioral science, in which we were seeing like scenarios. And then we had to discuss it uh, as part of our group of our pod. Uh, we were 12 in a pod. Yeah, that's pretty much what we had in ethics and behavioral science. We didn't have uh, any exam, we didn't have any papers or work to do anything as compared to the other courses when we had exams at Christmas. So now moving on to PBL, which is problem-based learning. So uh, for the first semesters, the scenarios that we were seeing were kind of linked with what we're doing either in physiology or anatomy. Uh, well, I mean, as much as they could, because you know, we were seeing pretty basic stuff, whereas PBLs are more clinically oriented. But for example, we had like a few scenarios where um, when we're doing endocrinology and physiology, we had like diabetes uh, in one of these PBLs, or when we're doing the shoulder, we had a case 
uh, of a rotator cuff tear. Like I just told you earlier with uh, like a football player or something like that. I can't uh, quite remember exactly. And that was pretty much it for my first semester. Um, other students had a different course as well uh, on top. which was called Medical Humanities. And as part of that course, you had like different sort of options, uh, different courses that you could have. For me, I didn't have it in the first semester, I had it in the second semester and I had Health and Equality. We had a few speakers, it was really cool. We saw like um, what health means, what healthcare means um, throughout the world and the different disparities, especially towards access. And yeah, we had a presentation too. I still have a presentation to do on the 21st, which is um, yesterday when this video is going to come out and then I'm done for the year. I'm like completely done. I'm just going to have to wait for my grades. So let's move on to the courses that I had on my second semester. So I've been talking here for about a few minutes now, I think like 15 minutes and I wasn't even recording. <sighs> Anyways. Okay. So let's start with human form and function, which has physiology and anatomy inside. So the whole purpose of these courses was to look at the internal organs. So we saw the thorax, the abdomen and the pelvis. So we had five blocks. We had the respiratory system, we had cardio, we had GI, renal and genital urinary. And now I'm missing something. I think that's pretty much, you know, the big systems that we looked at. So, in anatomy, what we saw was all the organs in the thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. Um, and we also had labs. So in the labs, we had the uh, donor bodies and we looked at all these different organs. We studied them. It was such a cool learning experience. Uh, you know, getting your hands on is really something different than just looking uh, at one of your books. Like, you know, yes, you can't look inside your book, um, see like different organs and stuff. But, you know, it's not the same thing because you can't really... You know, like now you're looking at a picture of the pancreas, for example, but it's different when you look at it in a body because all the different systems and structures are actually a bit different in a real body uh, as compared to, you know, inside a book. Like the heart, I don't know why, for some reason, I thought the orientation was, you know, way more towards the side, but actually it's a bit towards the front. I don't know, I just thought that the apex would be way more sideways uh, as compared to what it actually is inside a body and you know there were a few donors in there so you could like walk around and see different anatomical variations so that was really good for your learning because it's one thing to see it in the book but it's completely different to see an actual human body so that was really cool i'm really grateful to have had that experience so what we looked at was basically how the organs are related to one another um, either like through ligaments holding them, uh, either through like relations between um, different organs, uh, their blood supply, their lymph drainage, their nerve supply, really, really briefly their function because that was in physiology that we saw that. Uh, and then a few clinical things here and there for every single system. So yeah, that was really cool. That was like, like, I don't know, more like medical stuff as compared to like first semester like in biochemistry, we had like the Krebs cycle, but yeah, anyways, I was more excited for this semester, let's say. So then moving on to physiology. So we were doing things in parallel with anatomy. So when we were doing the respiratory system, we we're doing the lungs basically in anatomy, we we're seeing, you know, the structures, the hilum, their attachments, um, the different, you know, anatomical landmarks, which you can see, um, like, you know, at which rib does uh, the left lung stop or how many parts does the upper left lung has, you know, and stuff like that. Whereas in physiology, we're seeing like, you know, gas exchange, um, VO2 max, seeing how respiration works, seeing what muscles drive respiration, what kind of reflexes there are in respiration. Um, we're seeing effects of exercise, effects of altitude and stuff like that. So anatomy is really like the description of the structures and relations to one another, whereas physiology is really about the functioning and a bit of their biochemistry and stuff. So another example is um, when we're doing the heart, well, in anatomy, we were seeing, you know, in the, uh, I don't know, the right atrium, for example, like the fossa ovalis and what's its relevance and the embryo and stuff like that. Whereas in physiology, we're seeing like ECGs, blood pressure, electrical conductance and things like that. So the thing that was really cool in physiology this semester is that we actually had labs. So 
there is a good part and a not so good part about these labs. So first of all, well, the good part is that we actually had labs. We had four labs. The first one was respiration. The second one was exercise. Then we had ECGs and blood pressure. So we had four labs. Now, due to the current sanitary situation, there's a lot of things that we couldn't do. So for the ECG lab, well, you can imagine that we're supposed to do ECGs on one another. So we couldn't do that. And then for the blood pressure lab, for example, you know, you had cuffs and then uh, you were supposed to, you know, measure the systolic and diastolic pressure uh, using your stethoscope. So I can't wait to actually use this thing and actually learn how to use it. In anatomy, we learn um, the different auscultation points, you know, for the different uh, valves and stuff. I'm not sure I remember the exact placement, but no, it's going to be through practice. So, yeah, I can't wait to actually use this. So anyways, that's what we did for uh, the labs in general. Um, there are a few other things that we're supposed to do, like for the respiration lab, we're supposed to do like a, a full spirometer graph. So, you know, seeing the different lung volumes and stuff like that. For the exercise lab, we're supposed to measure like the uh, exchange ratio, the VO2 max, um, the oxygen consumption and stuff like that of a student on a stationary bike doing like, you know, different intensities. They would do graph and stuff like that. So. Um, sadly, we didn't get to do that, the experimental part. However, we had a demonstration for a few of those um, for like ECG, I think, and for the blood pressure one uh, for the bike. Well, we didn't have a demonstration, but we had a video, I think, um, like a summary of what the lab was and a lot of theory. So uh, we didn't miss out on much regarding the theory, regarding the learning. Um, it's more about the experience. It's more about making you feel like you're in medical school, you know, like actually getting to use your stethoscope and putting on someone and listening to their heart for example when we're supposed to do the ecgs for example i think that we're supposed to auscultate one another because we also saw um the different heart sounds so you know the systolic and diastolic sounds and stuff like that the different valves opening and closing so it would have been really cool to be able to use it but sadly you know it's something that's out of our control but the good part is we didn't miss much of the learning experience the learning was there the theory was there it's just the experience itself you know making you feel like in medical school and stuff so anyways hopefully i'll get to do that next year or at some point soon before starting my clerkship my third year before starting you know the actual rotations and seeing patients i think we're supposed to learn that in the second half of the second year i'm not too sure i'm gonna tell you in a few months where i'm gonna be in second year but anyways let's keep going with the other courses All right, so moving on to biochemistry, I have the list of topics right here. So we had lipids, alcohol metabolism, folate and B12 metabolism. We saw inflammation, hormone action, medical genetics, gene expression, transcription, translation, and then growth factors and apoptosis. So just like last semester, biochemistry is really high schooly. It's really high school stuff, nothing really interesting except for the medical genetics part um that was cool you know we saw a few uh, hereditary diseases and on top of that we had four labs so three of them were fully online and one of them was in person so the four labs that we had was spectrophotometry then we had subcellular fractionation we had enzyme kinetics and oxidative phosphorylation so the one that was in person was subcellular fractionation where we had to you know separate um, different enzymes and different parts of within inside the cell. We had to break the cell and use different enzymes to break the mitochondria to liberate different enzymes and stuff like that. And there was some pipetting involved. Ooh, and we had like a whole tutorial on how to pipette. And I was like, what am I doing here? But yeah, anyways, half of the lab was like pipetting. And then, oh, something that was really nice that I never had in my life before. So we were doing, um, in this lab, there was some spectrophotometry involved. We were seeing the rate of a reaction. So you would see changes in absorbance. But the thing that was really cool, oh, I threw the paper actually, but the actual absorbance graph was traced by machine. You didn't have to do it by hand. I mean, finally, like all the tuition that I'm paying, all that money that I'm spending, I, at least it goes somewhere in these machines because drawing these by hand was so painful. Like the graphs in the labs, I remember like for the years that I've worked in labs, I had so many labs, so many lab reports, and 
I can tell you when it's a machine that does it for you, oh, it feels nice. Like it's, it's just better. At least I find it better, less hard, you know, less painful to do it by hand. And then, oh, you're, you're lying as trace wrong. You didn't include like the last point. And then which point do we exclude? Which point do you keep in? Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, you can do everything by Excel these days, but uh, we weren't allowed computers back then when I was doing um, undergrad and stuff like that. I mean, I'm talking as if I did that 20 years ago, but it was only like a year or two ago, but they had strict rules regarding like personal equipment inside the lab due to like safety reasons and stuff like that. So that's why I'm saying that it's very helpful. That it was a machine. So that was cool, but uh, still it wasn't really making me feel like it was a medical school, but you know, people who come from different um, study backgrounds need to see this material. So yeah, it is what it is. You need to go through it and So then moving on to ethics and behavioral science. So um, that was more like of a continuation of the first semester. So we saw again, different topics, uh, same thing like ethics and behavioral science tutorials with different cases and um, different things like that. We, once again, we didn't have any exam. Uh, what we had though is a big final paper worth 40%. Um, so I think I talked to you about that in my previous video. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything there is to say about ethics and behavioral science. And then the last scores that I had, I just mentioned to you a few minutes ago was, um, health and equality. And that was it for my second semester. That's it with, uh, the PBLs, of course, um, the PBLs this semester were actually quite a bit more interesting than the first one, because we could relate more to the material that we were seeing inside these clinical scenarios, because we were seeing the organs at the same time. So we had like different blocks uh with different scenarios depending on the block that we're doing in class so uh, that was a bit like easier to understand it was less hard in a way because in the first semester i felt like it was a bit out of context sometimes you had to go way out of your way to do research to be able to understand what's going on what's the clinical relevance of everything whereas now um it made more sense it was closer to what we're learning in class so that was really cool so on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video. This video is specifically for what I learned for anyone that's interested about what I learned during my first year of medicals at Trinity. So for future students, if you want to know what you're going to see during your first semester, well, this is it. This is the video. Now, obviously it didn't include every single thing. I didn't include it like a course outline of the stuff that you're learning because like it would never end. There's just a lot of material, so I can really include it in a short video, but I hope that was helpful in some way. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. I'm also doing a Q and A uh, in about two or three weeks time. I need to check my schedule for that. So if you have any questions for me, you can comment them down below or send me a DM on Instagram at ov.men. And if you didn't see my previous videos, I'm going to put them right here and see you in the next video.